Okay, so now that the, that the learners have uh, interacted with the Stiggins article, and they've got you know, a sense of these different kinds of assessment, which they probably all have practiced before, they just didn't necessarily have the, the, the terms that they attached to them. Um, Signal now to the learners that we're gonna, you know, our purpose is to design performance assessment in these two days. So we have an overview of the larger assessment landscape, and now we're gonna drill down and really get clear on what we mean by performance assessment. So this slide will signal to you that, that, you're, that you're in that process of sort of focusing on this aspect of assessment, and that we'll continue with this focus through the rest of the two days. I'm gonna actually also model a little bit for you how I would run this next section um, and sort of do a little less narration, a little bit more sort of modeling what it actually looks like, perhaps a little bit faster than you might do it. Um, so I'll, I'll begin right now by, by, by saying that, that this picture signals what I, what I do for participants is I say, um, look, almost all of us have experienced uh, a performance assessment before. Um, those of you who have a driver's license have done um, an assessment that had to measure what you do um, by watching you do it. Um, what I tell my friends who are non-educators, when they ask me you know, what I'm involved in and, and, and what's my sort of expertise in education, I say, um, I use this kind of cliched example, but it really works, um, that, that, that performance assessment is getting into that car with the driver trainer and they watch you drive by, by you driving for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, and of course, in contrast to that is what we men commonly known as the permit exam, where you take a multiple choice test as a 15 year old um, on traffic laws. And that's of course what allows you to be able to start the, the driver training process. Both are valuable, um, but most of society agrees that we don't let people have a driver's license based on the multiple choice permit exam because it's not giving us enough evidence that someone's really ready to drive. So I tell you this example because it gives kind of a, a real basic metaphor for uh, the difference between performance assessment and sort of non-performance assessment. You've also read the Stiggins piece. So with this metaphor in mind, as well as with anything else that you've thinking of, that you've thought about in terms of how you define performance assessment, I am going to give you a series of phrases, um, each of which is a kind of assessment, and I want you silently, don't have to write anything down, I just want you to look at what's on the screen and kind of take, take, your, gut, take your gut check on it. Is it a performance assessment or is it not a performance assessment, PA or not a PA? Ready? I'm gonna move through these slides relatively quickly. I'm gonna give learners you know, no more than a few seconds to look at each one, reminding them that they don't need to raise their hand or shout out anything. Um, just, just look and think. Here we go. A multiple choice math quiz. Is that a PA or not a PA? An essay. Realize it's a little general. Uh, it's okay to not to say maybe. But think through your process. Why are you saying maybe? A lab report. A chemistry AP exam. A job interview. A music audition. I am moving through this a little faster than you might. An SAT multiple choice question. Textual analysis of a people's history of the United States. That's a, a kind of an alternative um, a text on US history written by Howard Zinn. Uh, many social studies teachers are familiar with this. A research paper on ancient Greek drama. And one more. A student written and performed tragedy in Greek style. Now, here is a slide that shows the entire list of what you just looked at. So I've asked you to think about each one you know, for a few seconds by itself. This is kind of a reminder of the bigger picture. And now what I'd like you to do, again, this is what I'm telling participants, is I'd like you to uh, pair up with a shoulder partner. And I want you to, for 
90 seconds, discuss with each other, um, not the answers that you're giving, but what was the criteria that you discovered yourself using to um, ultimately evaluate whether you thought something was or wasn't a performance assessment, or even whether you, didn't, you weren't sure. Um, so go ahead and discuss with your partner um, what your thinking was on these. You don't have to cover them all, but um, again, focus not on the right answers, but on the criteria that you're using. Go ahead. Okay, so, that, so there was just me modeling kind of how I would introduce this to participants. You can circulate the room a little bit at this point, you know, measure sort of how long you want to give them based on the, the energy of the conversations. Um, if you feel like you have time, you can ultimately whole group this briefly. You can just ask for two or three volunteer pairs to share out um, what were some of the criteria that they observed. So an example, a pair might say, yeah, open-endedness. So if there's an open-ended answer, we felt like it was performance assessment, and if it was more of a closed-ended, it was not. And you would say, great, that's certainly true. Um, who else has got a piece of criteria that comes up? So you can, you can entertain some whole group suggestions. Um, if you don't feel like you have time for that, um, it's okay to move on to the next uh, segment as well. Now, tell them this. I deliberately withheld some information from you um, that I'm now going to give you about some of these assessments. And I want to see if it confirms or somehow uh, changes or makes you rethink things at all. Um, job interview. What if I gave you a learning target or sort of goal of the assessment with this statement, I can do this job? And, and I want you to sort of think through um, how that additional information uh, affects or doesn't affect your thinking. Um, distribute this handout. You know, with, you know, don't get people into discussion yet. Say, this is a handout that takes some of those uh, assessments adds a learning target next to them, and you're going to give them a few minutes to work through this and see if whether you think it's a performance and why or why not. Remind them that this is for their own purpose, so they can bullet point it or if they, if they can scratch out notes or if they don't want to scratch out notes, that's fine. But it's a way to kind of, um, uh, to tool for, for their thinking. So hand this out, have them work silently on this for, um, I think, you know, close to four, four to five minutes. And um, when you feel like it's time, then you can either have them go back into their shoulder partners and kind of walk through um, what they've pulled out in this together, um, or you can also go immediately to whole group, depending on what you think is best at that point. Um, ultimately, though, you want to generate some discussion around how the addition of the tur learning target kind of affected their take on whether this was uh, a performance assessment or not. Some of these are kind of no-brainers, um, but some of them have been designed to kind of create a little bit of cognitive dissonance. Um, generally, what you'll find in discussion is that people often talk about the job interview. Uh, it, it could emer emerge, which is convenient since we go back to that slide here. Um, and a lot of times, you can elicit the discussion of the job interview before you even have to come to this slide. So you'll have to kind of finesse that a little bit. But ultimately, um, people will kind of notice that whether or not a job interview measures whether you can do this particular job depends on the job interview, right? The traditional job interview where you sit on the other side of a desk and you answer questions um, is a way to indirectly guess at someone's ability to do the job. It's kind of an assessment by proxy. Um, but it's not direct evidence about someone's on the job a skill level. Um, there are exceptions to this, and because you're working with educators, you'll often hear, but I had to do a guest lesson and stand in front of a class and deliver a lesson, and that felt like they were measuring my skills. If you hear that, awesome. That means that people are really thinking about this alignment between the assessment and what kinds of evidence are being gathered and what's, what's the goal of the assessment. Um, this next slide, though, allows this little twist where you change the statement. What if? I go from I can do this job to I can interview well. Um, some people have already brought this up that, that if that's what you're looking for to assess someone's ability to interview, then a job interview is kind of a slam dunk assess 
way to assess that. Um, but of course, whether or not the job can be done, uh, that's a, not as much of a slam dunk, it depends. Um, so there can be a lot of rich discussion around this. Um, just as a note, in terms of the thinking behind some of these, there are no really right and wrong answers. Some people have, have successfully argued that in some way they're all performance assessments, and that can be true. Um, however, um, we've discussed the job interview. I think in most cases it's fair to say that designing a scientific experiment, we're not sure if the lab report is an assessment of that because we don't know whether it's a recipe lab report or whether they really had to design their own experiment. Um, the multiple choice question for the SAT, definitely some cognitive dissonance there. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, we're going to get to the fact that when it's, a, when it's that closed of an answer, when you're not producing or performing something, um, probably doesn't qualify. Um, I can analyze primary historical sources. Textual analysis of people's history is not going to be um, an assessment of that target because it doesn't rely on primary sources. You need to have them reading something differently if that's your target. Um, and lastly, these last two for Greek tragedy, the purpose here is to show that both of them are actually performance assessments. Um, the research paper is one. The student written tragedy is another. This one throws a lot of people. They, they definitely see the tragedy as one, and they see the research paper um, as perhaps not, because they don't think they don't like it as much, or, or for whatever reason. Um, but if you want to get into this, you can note that, hey, they're different, uh, and they're gathering sort of a different take on it. But both of them are offering evidence of a student's understanding of ancient Greek tra tragedy. You may want to do both. Um, but it's a way to show that there is often more than one way to assess a given target. And your task as a designer is to figure out the best way or the way that works best for a particular situation. Ultimately, that will get you to this slide, where you can basically say what, what has been surfaced is sort of two defining dimensions of a performance assessment. Um, when they just looked at the performance assessments themselves, we were seeing that largely we're thinking about whether it's a product or a performance. Um, is something been actively created, or has there been some sort of student um, performance that had to be judged by another human being? Um, however, we've introduced that there's another factor that needs to be attended to, and that is whether or not it really is applying the, the predetermined learning target. Are you really getting at that one? Um, and so this is an important slide to measure the rest of the two days because um, let the participants know this is the way that when we're sharing our assessments with each other, we have to hold each other to both sides of the equation. It's not just having students make something or do something. You need to be sure that what they're making or what they're doing is giving you the evidence um, toward the learning target that you've established already. One more metaphor that you can walk them through that often helps people think about uh, uh, performance assessment. Um, and it often is a, it's a, uh, a metaphor that you can return to through the two days. Um, this returns to the driving test. Um, one aspect of the driving test that is typical of most states is you have to parallel park, or in some states like California, it's a three-point turn. Either way, it's the most terrifying part of the assessment, the one that everybody kind of uh, sweats over and often fails over. Um, but it really is an example of uh, a true performance assessment because of the ways that it moves through time. Um, how do you get ready for that assessment ahead of time? You practice by parallel parking. What do they watch you do during the assessment? You parallel park. And then finally, how do you apply the skill that's been assessed out in the world after the assessment? You're actually parallel parking. So to see the fact that there's consistency in what the learner uh, is practicing, getting assessed on, and then applying going forward is a great way to think about a performance assessment design in addition to the definitions uh, and examples we've been giving prior. We end this section with a quote from Rick Stiggins, which um, reminds us of a couple elements that we've discussed already. Uh, first of all, there's that performance or product a phrase, which seems to kind of go across everybody's definition. 
Um, and I think another interesting thing about this one is it requires uh, a judgment as to its quality, which is kind of anticipates our needs for things like criteria and rubrics and those things which we'll discuss uh, later in the um, two days.